This is Brother Cromar again, and, and uh, this video is part two of inference for one mean sigma known. This is for lesson 10. And we'll be talking about requirements and final definitions for a confidence interval, and then doing sample size calculations. So this first slide is dealing with requirements for confidence intervals, and this is very similar for requirements for doing a hypothesis test for one sample or one mean standard deviation known. So this is more or less review. So the sample needs to be a simple random sample. The population standard deviation sigma is known, and then either one of these conditions are satisfied. The population is normally distributed, or the sample size and or the sample size is greater than 30. And this last requirement is met due to the central limit theorem. Now, in the in the um, textbook, in the online textbook, it talks about this being assumptions that we make. But these, especially with the second and third one, these are requirements that we can check so that we can make certain assumptions so that we can do the test. Okay. So now the next slide I want to mention is final thoughts about confidence intervals. Okay. So a confidence interval describes a process of creating an interval that predicts the mean mu, which is unknown. So approximately uh, 1 minus alpha times 100% of all possible confidence intervals will contain mu. So say for instance if alpha here is equal to 0 0.05, approximately 95% of all possible confidence intervals will, will contain mu. So we could do a thousand confidence intervals or so and if and we what that would mean is that approximately 95 percent of all of those confidence intervals will contain the true mean this does not mean the probability of containing mu the interval or the population mean the interval either captured it or it did not so it's either zero or one we either got it or we didn't so think about it in terms of when you flip a coin okay before flipping the coin the likelihood of getting heads is 50 percent but say for instance you throw the coin and then you catch it and then you put it on your hand covering covering the coin not knowing if it's heads or tails so now what's the probability of it being heads well you might think it's 50 percent but it's no longer 50 percent the probability it's either zero or one because it's the coin has already been flipped it's already been done the process has been done so it's either at its heads or it's not and, and so that's so that's an example in terms of what you can think about in terms of probability so the confidence interval once it's done we either got the true mean or we didn't. So the probability of capturing the true mean is zero and one. So there's really two different two different definitions about confidence intervals. So for 95% confidence, uh, it's really dealing with the process. Okay. So if we were to do this a, a, a gazillion times, about 95% of those confidence intervals would contain the true mean. The other definition, I'll go back a couple of slides here, is just to say that we are 95% confident or 99% confident down here, whichever it is, that the true mean is somewhere between two numbers. That's the basic definition of what of or why or what it is that we do a confidence interval for. And this would be the other definition would be, be this one here, which is doing the process. So if we're going to do this a thousand times or a gazillion times, about 95% of all confidence intervals will contain the true mean. Now the last thing I want to mention is dealing with sample size calculation. So the formula for a sample size when, uh, calculation when trying to do a confidence interval, 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval, level of confidence. And this would be the formula. It would be z, z critical value times the population standard deviation divided by the margin, desired margin of error. And if we square all that, we would get the desired margin of error. So now what I'd like to do is go to, and I'm going to skip through this a little bit, go through a sam some sample size calculations. So based on historic data obtained from Brother Ber Scott Birch from the grade point average of students at BYU-Idaho is known to have a population standard deviation of 0.68. We want to create a confidence interval for the true mean GPA for last semester. So now, what sample size would you need to get a margin of error of 0.02 for a 95% confidence interval? Now here's the formula over here on the bottom right. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to take the critical value relative to the 95% confidence interval. So in that case, it's 1.96 times our standard deviation, which is 0.68, divided by our desired margin of error, which is 0.02. And we multiply and divide all that together, and then we square that number, and we get a number of 44.41. We always round up. It could be 44.02, but we always round up to get the sam sample size calculation. So in this case, it's, we round up to 45, and that would be our, our sample size. We need to get the desired margin of error, 0.02. So, so stop the video and figure this question out. What sample size would you need to get the margin of error 0.01 for a 95% confidence interval? Well, the answer to that is, now the only thing that changes is the desired margin of error, which is 0.01. Everything else stays the same because you're still doing a 95% confidence interval and you still have the same standard deviation up here. 
when you calculate that, you get you get 177.64. Rounded up, you would get 178. And that concludes uh, part two of the lesson 10 video dealing with inference for one mean sigma known, de primarily dealing with confidence intervals.